Hello my friends and welcome to my next artsy adventure. I'm starting off with a small haul with supplies from the online store Sari Stamping Studio and I will link to her online store in the description box below. The first item from All and Create is this awesome stamp set with Frida Kahlo and then I have this versatile stamp set with hearts and wings. Next are these stamp sets with beautiful flowers and most of the items was chosen by my husband and I must say he did a great job. He also chose these amazing stamps that look like blueprints or sketches of things I know nothing about but I can see many ideas and projects for them. Then I have these gorgeous flowers with dyes to cut them out. And finally, this big stamp set that is very much my style and there are so many fun ideas to play around with. I chose one thing for this haul and that is this beautiful stencil from Studio Lights. And I think it's just amazing and all of these fun supplies are from Sorry Stamping Studio. Now let's put that small stamp set to use and create something with Frida Kahlo and those iconic flowers in her hair. But first I need an inky background. I am going to start with ink smooshing and a few oxide ink colors. I have Salty Ocean, Tumbled Glass, Shabby Shutters and Rustic Wilderness and I smoosh them on my surface and spray with water before I put my paper down. Tim Holt says you get what you get and you don't throw a fit and I think it can be a good thing that the first print isn't great because it forces me to keep going until I'm happy. The key to ink smooshing is to be patient and dry in between the smooshing so the colors layer rather than blend and I spray the ink again with water and continue until I used up most of the ink then I clean up and put down more ink. I'm aiming for a speckle and layered background and I don't mind those white splotchy areas at all. I love the areas where the blue overlap the green making an almost teal color. So I put down those two colors and use a small brush to make splashes with the blue, the green and the color they make when blended. Then I pull out my blending tools and distress oxide ink in shabby shutters and I blend in that light green to enhance that yellowish green already there. I do the same with the other colors in the background going back and forth and at the end I blend in faded jeans to darken the edges where there is blue like rustic wilderness does for the green parts. Then I bring out my most used stencil from Alter New and I love it because it gives my projects an abstract floral feeling without overpowering the smooshed background. I used Rustic Wilderness to stencil in just parts of the green background and I use faded jeans on the blue parts of the background and stencil partially so there is only a hint of that floral pattern. Next up is clean water and I spray it in the middle of my background and pick up color with a paper towel until I feel the middle is light enough. Now let's stamp these wonderful images and I use a stamping platform so I can double stamp if I need to. I stamp as many images as I can fit in because I want to try out my coloring to see what works. And I want to build up dimension by paper piecing some of her traits later. I stamp in archival black soot because I intend to watercolor with my distress inks and oxide inks. I colored so many images trying out what I liked and I will only show the coloring on the images that made the final cut. I wanted to use a color palette that coordinated with the Mexican flag because Frida was a Mexican artist so for her outfit I chose to use red and green. 
I mix and match between Distress Inks and Distress Oxide Inks. Her blouse is colored with barn door, fired brick and aged mahogany for the deepest shadows. Frida painted many self-portraits and she challenged the views on identity, ethnicity and gender. She lived from 1907 to 1954. I colored her skirt in shabby shutters, mowed lawn and rustic wilderness. For her skin tone I used the colors tea dye and then a vintage photo for the shadows. I painted in so many flowers and the ones I ended up using are these with a dark red center rose and pink roses on the sides. I used festive berries, barn door and eight mahogany for the red rose and spun sugar, kitsch flamingo and picked raspberries for the pink roses. I tend to always use a green with a lot of yellow in it for leaves and this was no exception. They are colored with twisted citron, mowed lawn and rustic wilderness. Now. I used flowers I drew myself because I wanted them a certain way, but there are so many flower stamps to buy or already cut out and colored flowers. Don't think you must do it all yourself to have fun crafting. These two flowers are colored in the same combo of colors as the outfit, but since the area to color is so small, I used two reds and one green. You who have followed me for some time don't expect me to draw realistically at all. But for new subscribers I want to say I can draw realistically so I choose to draw funny if I can. And these little hungry flowers are of course colored in the same red with shading at the base of the flower and lighter where they bite. The stem of these biting flowers are colored in twisted citron and rustic wilderness and I'm always mindful of introducing new colors. I rather keep my car together by using the same colors as often as I can. Next up is this hot daisy colored in the same colors, darker at the base of each petal and lighter further out. And for the middle of this flower I bring in the yellow scattered straw and a distress marker in fossilized amber to give shadow. Can these flowers be any more crazy? I say yes and bring you this flower with brushes instead of petals. I color the brushes, handles, in vintage photo and ground espresso. For the bristles I use frayed burlap and finally I bring in a silver gel pen for the metal part. If you are on board with my crazy flowers, you may be okay with flying brushes. And flying brushes it is. I color the handle the same way as before. And for the wings, I use the same reds. Aged mahogany at the base of each feather. Then fired brick, barn door and candied apple to lighten the feathers at their finest point. Now, let's indulge in some small details. I have my Frida colored, but I want a bit of dimension. First, by stacking some of these small pieces and gluing them together. 
like the lace on her blouse. I stack two lace pieces, two extra eyes, and the flowers in her hair. Then I take that stacked laced border and glue it on to the blouse. Then I glue down a pair of extra eyebrows. Teeny tiny work, but so satisfying. Next up is her tiny earrings that I cut out and colored with a gold gel pen. Then I glue down an extra teeny tiny rosy cheek and an extra teeny tiny red mouth. Next up is those extra stacked eyes and I glue that single eye down before I glue down those stacked flowers in her hair. I use a white gel pen to give those roses some highlights and then my tiny details are all in place and when I hold her up you can see those details and I'd like to think that they make a difference even if you're not aware of my hunt for dimension. To keep my images from floating in the air I pull out my book pages and use multi matte medium to glue them down and seal them on a sturdy piece of cardstock. Then I cut out a strip for my girl to stand on. I glue that strip down on my background. And then I start gluing down my flowers. I glue down the wonky flowers, the biting flowers and the brush flowers on one side. On the other side I glue down my female flower, the heart daisy and finally Frida herself. I want my brush birds to fly high and I glue them down high up like birds playing in the wind. I use scissors to snip off any flowers hanging off the edge and then I use a darker blue chipped sapphire to ink up the edges of the sky and I use ground espresso for the edges of the ground and finally black soot to finish off framing this scene. I'm going to go with a sentiment from the same stamp set and I put my card in my stamping platform, center my sentiment as good as I can and treat the card with my anti-static bag to get rid of any tackiness before I stamp the sentiment. Inverse a fine onyx black ink and cover it with clear embossing powder and melt it until shiny and slightly raised. I finish this card by gluing my panel onto a red piece of cardstock, framing it and to get rid of any warping of the paper, I put it in a heavy book and wait until it's flat. And with that, my mixed media card is finished. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you will find your way back soon again. Until the next time, see you soon.